Hi everyone, welcome back. This is week 55 of my social isolation get ready with me. This week I'm gonna be using a photo I took of a soap and a bath bomb that gave me inspiration for this color story that we're about to do. So I was taking a bath over the weekend using my JoJo's bath bomb products. I have a soap of hers and a bomb that was in the tub. And the colors that came out of this were so freaking pretty that I want to try to do an eyeshadow look based on this. So uh, I've chosen the Blush Tribe Neon Dreams palette for this look because I think all the colors I need are going to be in here. Um, this is a palette that is no longer available right now um, because, well actually the brand has like gone under. Uh, they no longer exist. I think they came back as another brand. Uh, like they totally rebranded, changed their name, but now they're also gone. So if you do happen to have this palette, uh, good for you. I know a lot of people actually hated the quality of this thing because they found it unblendable. Um, I don't really have an issue with it. They are neon pigments which are hard to blend for sure so if you're using something like this that is neon in essence you have to really pat the shadows on instead of like trying to windshield wiper motion them uh not true of all of them but for most neons um so anyway that's enough babbling let's get into this look i'm excited to see how this is going to come out yeah it was funny with this photo like it wasn't just the um bath water which is like electric purple but it was like the soap plus my bright yellow neon nail color that just really came together to make an awesome color story so fingers crossed this is gonna work on the eyes i'm also having this idea to try it as a cut crease which uh i've done maybe twice before so i really don't know how that's going to come out but uh we're gonna give it a shot cut creases i feel like can look really good on some people if they have the right eye shape um and maybe it's just the way that I do it. I don't cut the corner at the right angle. Um, I find it tends to look a little bit strange on me, but I really think it's just a lack of practice in doing that. Much in the same way that um, winged eyeliner used to take me forever to figure out how to do on myself. Uh, everybody's eye shape is different and it takes a really long time of practicing to figure it out, or at least it did for me. I remember um, several years ago, having to, this sounds so ridiculous, having to get up an extra half hour early just to do a wing liner before going to work <laughs> um, because I wasn't very experienced in it and I didn't really know the angle and I was constantly screwing it up um, that I'd have to get up actually early to do it before work. <laughs> Hey, paid off though. I'm very comfortable with doing wing liner um, and really generally pleased about how sharp it comes across. Okay, um, so I've got my reference photo, which I keep showing you in front of me. So hopefully I'm gonna replicate this. The first thing I'm gonna start with is the purple. So this is the shade Nadia. And from my recollection, well, purple in essence is never really neon. So this one I believe does actually blend quite well. So I'm gonna take that on a fluffy brush and I'm going to put that all through my crease. Oh yeah, this one blends out. I was very inspired by all of these bright colors uh, from the bath water and products that I've been buying lately. Like I even did my nails neon pink, which is something that I never do. I've mentioned before, I'm not very drawn to pink unless it's neon. But even then, I don't feel like I'm usually like a Barbie type nail color person. <laughs> Okay, I've got the purple on fairly heavily at this point. Uh, little look, huh? Now I'm gonna do the scary part, which is cut the crease. I have one of my two concealers out uh, to do this. This is the Mary Kay Perfecting Concealer in the shade Light Ivory. It's my palest concealer because I want to use that as the base. So I'm gonna take a flat brush for this. This is the Quo. Oh. Black writing on a black uh, handle is hard to see. This is the flat shade of brush, which makes sense. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to take the concealer and put it on the back of my hand. Take a little bit of it. And I'm gonna use that to carve out my crease. And this scares me always. So I'm just gonna be painting over the lid and then cutting it through there. I see some people get, that get these absolutely precise lines when they're doing this and I don't know how. Um, oh, also because my eyes are hooded, I'm trying very desperately not to open them fully because then it'll transfer up until this is dry. So I'm kind of squinting as I'm doing this. Okay. 
Okay, a little bit more over. It's not very rounded there. Maybe I need a smaller brush. I actually wonder if using one of these tiny liner brushes might work a little bit better for there for me. Oh, my eyelid is so floppy there. It just drags every time I'm pulling it. Ugh. But it's sort of working. Okay, I think that's fairly decent, except the rounded piece is not as rounded when I close my lids there. The problem is now, is I'm gonna have to replicate this on the other eye. Okay, I think that's relatively even. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait for this to dry a little bit. Okay, so the purple was the bath water. That sounds so weird to say. And now I kind of want to replicate the shades of the soap on my lid. And I'm going to try to tie in the pink with the purple in the outer corner, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do that exactly. I'm going to start with the green on the inner corner. So I'm dipping into Ruf Rufia. <laughs> and then I'm going to pat it on. I am not sweeping my brush whatsoever because I want it to be intense color payoff. And because my concealer is lighter um, and has a little bit of a grippy texture because it's still drying, it's going to pick up the color a lot better. And I want to pull it right up to that concealer line so that I'm hiding all of the white that I put on my eyes. Okay, the next color is an orange, which is gonna scare me a little bit because um, I don't know if I can blend orange into green. <laughs> We're gonna give it a shot. So I'm just flipping my brush over to the other side. That's relatively, you know, cleanish. And I'm gonna go into Anam here and put that right beside the green. I'm not going to bother blending it yet because I just want to get some color packed down. And heck, I don't even know honestly if that can blend, but we're going to find out. Okay, I've got the color down on the two of them. It's so funny, it doesn't show up as neon <laughs> in the viewfinder because I just don't think the camera knows how to handle it in person. This is electrifying. Um, so I want to try to blend between these two colors. So I'm going to flip back and forth between the green and the orange on my brush and just try to like drag it between the two colors. I don't want to overdo it because I'm pretty sure I can turn this into mud very quickly if I do, but I gotta do something other than just have these stripes of color because it looks really weird. So I'm just gonna pat some green over some of the orange. I mean, the transition's not gonna be much here. Like, this is not gonna be a seamless blend between the two. because fundamentally I would need a yellow in between them to get like a perfect blend, but I don't want to add yellow to that area because I, I want this to look like the soap. <laughs> okay, it's blended a little bit. I really don't think I'm gonna be able to get much better than that because I can see that it's starting to go a little bit muddy through the transition sort of blending area, um, but that's okay. Let's keep going and hopefully the whole look will turn out okay. Okay, so for the very outer corner area, I'm going to be going in with Maya. Just pack that on there. Thankfully, pink does blend into orange better because it is almost a red, really. And orange is beside red on the color wheel, so they do actually go together very well. Certainly a lot better than the, <laughs> than the orange and the green. I think I want to complete all of the eyes before I do any of the foundation, so we're just going to keep going here. I really want to blend out my brow bone though, because this is looking like a lot, so again, going in with my uh, Wet n Wild Brulee Single, and just cleaning up this line here. Oh yeah, much smoother. It was just creeping a little bit too high, so I want to bring it down a little bit. Okay, for the lower lash line, we're gonna do the yellow part, which was my nail. <laughs> um, and I have one yellow liner in my collection that's bright enough for this. It is the NYX Off Tropic Pro Liner 
in the shade Pineapple Punch. And it's not quite the same color as the yellow in here, but I'm gonna have to make it work because I just don't have any like neon uh, liners. <clears throat> so I'm gonna line my waterline with that. Oh, that's actually looking quite bright, nice. Line my waterline with that. Drag it through my lashes. Then I'm going in with Ruhina and I'm just lining my entire lower lash line with it. Hmm, that's not showing up a ton. Maybe I need concealer there, actually. I'm gonna take a little bit of concealer. <laughs> I've never done this. Underneath my lashes. <laughs> and I'm just blowing that out. Oh, my real beauty guru now. I'm putting a uh, <laughs> concealer under my eyes. I never do this. Okay, well, foundation is going to cover most of this ridiculousness, but I just need a binding agent for that um, neon pigment. Okay, back in with Ruhina. Oh, there we go. That's a bit better. Yellow as a color can, can be so problematic just because it's inherently translucent, so it doesn't tend to show up very well. I'm not making excuses just because this is a neon uh, pigment, which is also inherently a problem. But yellow can just be so not visible at times. But that whiter base certainly helped. Okay, um, this is looking so bizarre. The yellow is really like making, in the viewfinder anyway, I'm feeling very alien-esque. Uh, okay, wing liner. That makes everything perfect, right? Uh, Physician's Formula Eye Booster, no different than any other week in the last year. Okay, before I do mascara and lashes, I'm gonna add some sparkle to the inner corner of my eye. I'm using the Inglot Body Sparkles Crystals in the shade 103, which has a little bit of a green cast to it. Um, it can be, oh, I do not want to spill this at all. How do I focus this? It can be very hard to see the color in here, um, but they all have a little bit of a cast of a, a hue. So to put that on, I'm just taking a little bit of my Too Faced glitter glue and popping that on the inner corner of the eye. I do not want to drag it into the other colors. I just really want to pop right at the center here. I like these because they're flaky. So they're like little bit of uh, chunky glitter uh, and they're cut in like just different shapes. So it looks like, I don't know, like chunks of glitter. <laughs> All right, uh, time for mascara and false lashes and then I'll come back and we'll do the face. Okay, I got my lashes on and I'm really liking how that's coming together actually. Uh, let's do the face though. So I'm using my Inglot Beautifier Tinted Cream in the shade 103. Now I can actually talk about some things because I'm not so focused on the eye makeup. Um, so we had a short week this past week because it was uh, Easter long weekend. And uh, on, I think it was the Wednesday. I had this event at work, virtually, of course. And the marketing team that I'm part of sent us all these unbelievably nice packages for part of the um, event. And it was like a mixology class that we were doing all together. And we were sent, I'm not even kidding, like full-size bottles of vodka and gin, along with all kinds of mixers for the drinks that we were gonna be making together. And it was unreal, honestly. So not only did we get like the alcohol with the mixers and all the stuff to like add to the drinks and stuff like that, like literally like even like tiny little like sage leaves and um, raspberry puree to like mix in the drink, like it was unreal. But they also sent us like a full charcuterie board. <laughs> And I was just like, what is this? So I guess it was around two o'clock, this like insane delivery of like alcohol and meats and cheeses and um, all kinds of like little dipping sauces for a charcuterie board showed up. And I was like, this is incredible. Um, it was a really, really nice touch. And I like, look, I work for a bank. I know they make a lot of money, okay. But banks in general tend to be very restricted on how much they give back out to their employees in terms of like fun rewards kind of thing. 
Um, so to receive this was really freaking nice. And I guess in the sense that, you know, if we'd had like a, a social in person, um, that would have cost them quite a bit of money as well. So I think they just transferred that sort of expenditure and, you know, funneled it into sending um, their employees something really nice. But it was, it was such a delight to get that stuff. <laughs> it was really, it was just really, really nice. Especially in a time, you know, where people are like, they're struggling, they're uncomfortable, they're not uncomfortable and unhappy and just like not feeling great about themselves to get a package like that was just so so nice although it was definitely just my department receiving that because I, I showed a friend of mine who also works at the bank in a different department that and he's like yeah I didn't get anything like that today so this area here is not blended and won't blend um, but I'm gonna just try to like mash it out with my sponge because I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do anything there the colors are a little bit overworked at this point and the yellow doesn't want to do anything with the purple. <laughs> so I'm just trying to cover it a little bit with foundation to make it look like it kind of blends into each other. I think that kind of worked out. Um, I've been watching Superstore lately. I'd never heard of this show before. It turns out it was on NBC for like five years. Never heard of it in my life. Popped up on my Netflix. Um, all of a sudden I was like, okay, I'm looking for a short 20 minute show to watch while I'm playing WoW or doing something, you know, that doesn't require me to focus on it. And I honestly can't tell if I like it or not. I'm like almost on the second season, so I've obviously invested some time in this show, but I can't tell if it's any good. I mean, clearly it's decent enough because I keep watching it, but I'm like, do I even like any of the characters? Like, it's not nearly as funny as like The Office was or Parks and Rec or anything like that. But for whatever reason, I keep watching the show. Is it something that you guys had watched before or even heard of? Because again, until it had showed up on my Netflix about a week ago, I'd never heard of this show at all. The only reason I kind of like clocked onto it was because it got promoted to me and then I was like, oh, America Ferreira, you know, the girl from the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Like that was my only context for anything she's ever been in. We're almost done with WandaVision. I think we've got one more episode. And then I want to start watching uh, Snowpiercer season two. I like the movie and then, um, I mean, that was going back a few years with Chris Evans. Um, but then they turned it into a TV series instead, well, like a Netflix series. And I loved the first season, so I wanna watch the second one soon. I wasn't expecting them to have a second season so soon because I feel like I watched the first season, season during 2020, like during COVID time. So I'm surprised there's a second one already. Okay, for bronzer, I'm gonna be pulling out my Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil. Just a very pale, it's a neutral tone bronzer. It's not warm, it's not cool, it's just sort of in the middle, which is very nice. I also, uh, over this past weekend on Good Friday, because nothing was open, placed my very first Uber Eats alcohol order. Never done that before. And it was pricey. I mean, that being said, the bottles weren't actually priced that expensive. Um, but with tax and tip and delivery and all that kind of stuff, the price was like more than I wanted to spend, but hey, that was my first and probably last experience with it. Um, the reason I'm telling this story though is the entertaining part about it. Uh, so I added like four bottles of wine to my cart and I was just browsing through their website and I was like, oh, okay, like what else would I potentially want to order? And I didn't see anything I liked, but I was like, out of nowhere popped up this random orange for a dollar on their website. Like they had no other food, no nothing. It was all alcohol except for this one random orange. And I was like, well, that's strange. Um, I go to check out and the cart tells me you can't order alcohol unless you order any food. And then I went, ah, that's what the orange is for. So I had to order the $1 orange in order to get my uh, wine delivery, which was just like too freaking funny, right? I mean, obviously people have added uh, alcohol to Uber delivery because in this COVID times, um, people who don't feel comfortable going to the store all the time. And in my case, it was just Good Friday, so nothing was open. Um, but it, it made me laugh. They had to include that little like piece of grocery so that people could actually order. In the end though, we got like nothing of what we ordered. I ordered four of my favorite bottle of wine, which is the Folinari Pinot Grigio. And they called me, they're like, we only have one bottle of that. Uh, here's some other ones I can swap in. I was like, whatever, just put whatever you want in there that's a dry wine and I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll drink it. I got the order though and the Pinot Grigio, the one that I had specifically ordered, wasn't even the right thing. It was like a pink version of it and I was like, what? Like it was just really bizarre. I don't know. I've never even heard of this place. 
um, seemed a little bit sketchy in the end, so I think that might put a kibosh on uh, me ordering any kind of <laughs> alcohol on Uber Eats. Okay, bronzer's on for blush. I'm gonna be using this old one by MAC. Um, this was actually a press sample because a long time ago, I used to get a little bit of MAC um, uh, PR sent to me, which was so exciting the first time I ever got them. I was like, oh, I've made it as a blogger. Anyway, this is the Life's a Picnic blush and I wanted something super vibrant to match this, but I don't wanna to go too overboard on the cheeks. So hopefully I can, uh, you know, just tone it down. So I'm there and then just a little bit on the cheeks, not too much, just a little bit of color. <laughs> and then for highlighter, I'm going to be using one of my favorites. This is the Wet n Wild Loose Highlighting Powder in the shade uh, Written in the Stars. Was, this was part of their Zodiac collection. Um, the product is great, like it's so freaking beautiful, but so much comes out in this loose powder format that I only ever end up using a minuscule amount of what's actually in the cap. Like look how pretty that is. It's just, their loose powders, the wet and well ones are phenomenal. Some of the best I've ever used in terms of highlighters. Oh, went overboard. They're just so freaking pretty. Okay, face is done, eyes are done. I just have to do my brows before I forget. <laughs> Uh, and then I'll come back and we'll finish up the lips. Okay, so for lips, I kind of went back and forth on this. Um, I was thinking about using this Too Faced Melted Lipstick in the shade uh, Melted Fuchsia, but I think that's overkill. Um, so I'm gonna tone it down and use some of my Maybelline Matte Inks. Uh, I've got two shades here. I'm not really sure which one to go with. You know what, I'm just gonna mix the two of them. Um, so I'm using Dreamer and Loyalist. I'm gonna start with Dreamer. Is that maybe just not bright enough? I was gonna mix the other paler color on, but I think it, I don't know, I don't think it's enough color. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of Melted Fuchsia and add it to this color. I'm gonna start with it on my finger because I don't want too much, I don't think. Yeah, it just needs to be a bit brighter. I thought the paler colors were gonna work because generally when I mix like a bright eye with a bright lip, it doesn't look that good, but this one was just too pale. So I'm gonna take an actual lip brush here and just try to make this a little bit more precise. If I had done Melted Fuchsia by itself, it would have been a little bit too much um, because it is a super bright color. But mixed together, toned it down a little bit, which is good. Now the question is, is do I go ahead and add the gloss that I was planning on doing for this? Uh, I was going to use the Bite um, Yay Sayer Plumping Lip Gloss and Sugar Drizzle on top. Let's give it a shot. Mm. I don't like it with the gloss. Okay, removal. I'm just gonna take a piece of paper towel and blot over top. Now I've got a bit of the glitter sticking to it. Yeah, the gloss was definitely a mistake. I'm just going back in with the lip brush that's got color left on it and going over top. Eh, that's fine, I can't fix it much more anyway. There's some glitter stuck to it, but like, hmm. Okay, so there we go. That is my look based on a soap and a bath bomb. I love the color combination together. I think it's a lot of fun and it's making me feel very spring-like. I definitely like never do cut creases. This is probably the best one I have ever managed. Like that line, mm, I'm really happy with it right now. So I'm gonna leave you there. Thank you so much for joining me for week 55. Take care, stay safe, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye.